So I was reading an article about Carl Sagan, the Big Bang, the actual Big Bang, not the TV show, and Life on Other Planets the other day, and I ran across some rather interesting facts. That of course led me to dig into some other things, and as one thing led to another, I ended up with the main idea of this video. In the nutshell, it boils down to the odds of our even being here are astronomically against us. That's right, when you do the math, it's almost impossible for us to exist. But before we get into that, let me explain how I got there, and maybe we can figure out how we all got here. So it all starts out with me trying to definitively prove that there is life on other planets. Now I do not know for sure that there is life on other planets, but I do believe there is. It would be a rather dull existence if we were to believe that we were the only intelligent life in all of existence. Two, there have been so many accounts of people seeing UFOs that it's hard to believe that they do not exist. I'm talking about all of the historical accounts as well, from the Bible to the ancient texts right on up to modern accounts. I myself have seen a UFO, but I cannot say for sure that it was alien. It may have been high technology that was man-made. Third, there have been many accounts of abductions and sightings of other aliens that I have to believe that there's something to that as well. And lastly, but certainly not least, I do not believe that we are a product solely of evolution, chance, and luck. So there has to be higher life forms out there in my opinion. But all that is opinion and belief. Whether you believe in God or some other form of creation, or if you believe in evolution as defined by secular pseudoscience, the one thing that we can all agree on is math. Math doesn't lie. It doesn't believe, it doesn't have faith, and it doesn't care about things like traditions or religions or politics. In the 1950s, science fiction became quite popular as it started looking to the stars in search of more than just life. The idea that intelligent life was abundant in the universe, and therefore we would eventually run into a species so advanced that they would be able to essentially explain to us the meaning of life and what our purpose was, became quite common. Science declared in 1966 that God was dead. Carl Sagan said in an interview for Time magazine that there were two important criteria for life to exist, a star and a planet in a certain proximity to that star. Based on that statement, science figured out that there was roughly one octillion planets in the universe. That's a one followed by 27 zeros. And of those one octillion, there were approximately one septillion that were inhabitable or could support life. And that's one followed by 24 zeros. Now the idea that life was not only possible in space, but abundant and damn near everywhere was the new thing. Indeed, Time Magazine blasted, God is dead and we didn't need him anymore. We had our own theory of life and there wasn't any room for him in it. He had been replaced by science. Unfortunately for Time Magazine, science, and everyone who believed in secular evolution, in the last 50 years or so since that article was published, we still haven't found one shred of evidence that life exists outside of our planet. In fact, the opposite has happened. The requirements for life in space went from two criteria, to eight, to twenty, to fifty, and now we have about two hundred criteria that we say must exist for life to be possible on any given planet in space. Needless to say, the numbers of possible planets that fit those criteria have dwindled. According to all known data, there are now less than two thousand planets capable of supporting life, and that number drops further almost daily. Many hardcore scientists and physicists who believe in doing the math and then theorizing based on known facts now doubt that life is possible at all without a little help. In physics, the odds of us even existing is incredibly small. String theory and the multiverse theory says for our universe to even exist, there would have to be 10 to the 400th power universes in existence. And that's just to have a universe where a planet like Earth is possible. If you calculate an Earth-like planet with life on it, those odds almost double. Now that's any life. Not abundant life like Earth, but just any life at all. To get abundant life with a sentient life form, it's almost incalculable. So, there would have to be so many trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of universes in existence in order for just one, like ours, to randomly appear. And that is why so many scientists and physicists say that evolution is impossible. It's a mathematical certainty that a higher intelligence has monkeyed with the game to rig a prescribed outcome. 
And that's just the thing that Fred Hoyle, the astronomer and scientist who invented the term Big Bang, said in an interview on the subject. He stated that his atheism was greatly shaken at the development of modern physics. The numbers made it impossible for him to remain atheist. He later wrote that a common sense interpretation of the facts suggests that a super intellect has monkeyed with the physics as well as the chemistry and biology. The numbers one calculates from the facts seems to me so overwhelming as to put this conclusion almost beyond question. Now of course he didn't subscribe to a particular religion or dogma, but he did recognize that life is quite fragile. And there are so many systems and subsystems that must be in place to sustain it and allow it to thrive that the odds of it happening anywhere in the universe for just one life form were infinitely small. But to have such abundant life in one place, sustainable and working together, was impossible without the intervention of a higher power. As so many other scientists and physicists have also said, modern evolution and those who promote it are at odds with science. They are at odds with math and therefore they are at odds with themselves. Personally, I would love to think that there is a god up there with a big long beard who wears white gowns and loves us all very much. That's a nice thought, but I don't know if that's true. What I do know is that mankind has always seemed to know that there is no way that we just randomly occurred. We have come up with a bunch of different ways to express that thought, and when you do the math, it just seems to fit. So what are your thoughts on the matter? What do you believe? Get in the comments section and let us know. As always, thanks for your likes, subscribes, and comments, and we'll see you guys in the next video.